Hey guys, in this video I'm going to have a look at Sony stock. I'm going to check out their financial statements, do an intrinsic valuation analysis, and ultimately try and figure out what a fair price for their stock is, and whether it's time to buy it or not. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. I do a lot of stock analysis on this channel. So if you like that kind of thing, hit that subscribe button so you can check out more videos like this one. Alright, let's get started. Alright guys, so Sony operates in the consumer electronics industry. They make a wide variety of electronics, anything from, you know, TVs to cameras to the PlayStation there. You got headphones, lots of things here. Their revenue comes from a variety of sources. The largest two sources are electronics products there in purple and games and network services coming in at 24%. But they, as you can see, they got a lot of other things too. You got pictures, music you know, imaging and sensing solutions and financial services. Now, as far as where their revenues come from, 30% do come from Japan. That's where their headquarters is. But you got 23% from the US, 20 from Europe, and some from China and Asia Pacific as well. Here's a quick look at their stock. It is up at 65% in the past year. If you look at the past 10 years, it's up at 190%. Not bad. A PE ratio of about 12.5 looks very attractive. Of course, we have to look at their balance sheet, look at their growth projections to really get a better picture of it. But in initial look, it does look nice. They do pay a dividend, but the yield is very low, less than half a percent. And the company is currently being valued at close to $130 billion. Here is Sony's balance sheet. It is a very unusual balance sheet. You can see they have an extremely low debt to assets ratio, but a pretty high liabilities to assets ratio. So I have had a look at their balance sheet. And as you probably suspect, these liabilities are mostly short term. They are current liabilities. Now, can they cover their current liabilities? Not quite. They have a current ratio of 0.94, which means their current assets are only 0.94 of their current liabilities or 94%. So they're pretty close to covering them. They probably need to borrow a little money or something to make the ends meet there, but they're all right. Uh, because they don't really have any debt, their interest coverage ratio looks very safe. No trouble there. And so, yeah, it's a very interesting balance sheet. I would like to not see so many current liabilities, of course. Uh, but overall, it's not terrible. Let's see how Sony makes that paper. Uh, so to do that, we're doing a DuPont analysis. So their ROE, return on equity, how much net income do you get for a given level of equity you invest in the company? It really varies, but it looks to be, you know, recently about 23%. Kind of bounces around. I got to probably average it down to 20%. Not bad, not amazing. Uh, it's made up of three parts. One of those parts is net income margin, how much cash do you keep for every dollar of sales. You know, for Sony, it's never going to be amazing because they make physical products, not like these tech companies here. Uh, but still, you know, for their industry, not bad, not bad. Uh, especially if they can keep this trend going. It's gone up quite a bit in this past tw trailing 12 month period. 12.6% is a lot better than 7%. So hopefully we can keep going in that direction. But either way, not bad. Asset turnover. How much sales do you generate for every dollar of assets in place? Now, unfortunately for Sony in their industry as a whole, it's not good. You know, for every dollar of assets, they're able to generate, oh, just about 40 cents of sales revenue. You know, maybe 45 on average. Uh, you know, not great. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, the, the margins are good and the equity multiplier, of course, is really driving this ROE. They have high leverage. 
And so that that is the main thing driving it, unfortunately, not the organic profitability, the other two components there. So I don't love the business, but it's not bad either. I would buy the stock if it's a good deal. So here is Sony's revenue growth over time. It's been up and down, but not really going anywhere if you look at it. You know, for instance, in 2012, they had about $78 billion worth of revenue. And recently, they had about $82 billion. So, you know, not really the picture of incredible growth. Now, at the same time, they have become more efficient. To generate that revenue in 2012, they had about 163,000 full-time employees. And recently, they had about 112,000. So they have definitely become more efficient, and I'm sure that has increased their margins. Just to double check that, I pulled up their operating and gross margins over time. And if you look at the operating margins in red here, they have gone up steadily, reaching just about 11.2% most recently. All right, guys, so I'm looking at analyst forecast for revenue growth for Sony. And what we have here is revenue growth for the next, say, five or six years. For the revenue they're expected to report this month here in March, it's supposed to be about $82 billion. I think there's some sort of data error. They say it's a 1,400% growth. I don't think that's really true. I think it's kind of flatlining. After that, analysts are expecting it to grow at about 5 or 6% for the next couple of years. I will say, however, that there is considerable variability in the forecast. For example, for 2022, the lowest forecast is about $81 billion, the highest is about $96 billion. That being said, the average is closer to the lowest, the average being about $86 billion. So by taking the average, I'm, I'm erring more on the conservative side. The same goes for the following year. You've got forecasts ranging from about $84 billion to about $107 billion. So that's something we have to keep in mind when we make our model. Just consider what would happen if the more pessimistic analysts were correct here. Alright guys, so Sony is a very interesting company. I think I would like to own their stock. It really isn't amazing, but if the deal is right, I'm going to go for it. To figure out if it's a good deal or not, we're going to try to estimate the intrinsic value using a free cash flow to equity model. So to make the model work, I need to estimate a stream of free cash flows. To do that, I'm going to start with revenues and go from there. Let's have a look at a spreadsheet and see the path. All right, guys, so according to analysts, the revenues for Sony are supposed to be about $82 billion next year. So that's what I plugged in. Afterward, I plugged in the average analyst forecast going up to about year six. Afterward, I kind of made my own assumptions that they're going to be growing at about 4% and then down to 3%. This gives us a stream of revenues. So revenues are about $82 billion. They're expected to grow to about $114 billion in 10 years. To get from revenues to net income, I need to know what my margins are going to be. I'll start off kind of conservative, go with an average five-year margin here, about 10.2%. That gives me net income. To go from net income all the way to free cash flows, I need to subtract reinvestment needs. Now for Sony, because they're not going to be growing by much, they're not going to have a very high reinvestment rate. So, you know, I get about close to 18%, which means about $1.5 billion next year be reinvested back into CapEx. Assuming these assumptions are all reasonable, that gives us a stream of free cash flows to equity and also gives us a terminal value. Let's discount them back to present value and figure out what this company is worth. All right, guys, so I got my free cash flows to equity. I have a terminal value. The terminal value just assumes their free cash flows can grow 2% per year after 10 years forever. 
If that is true, we have a total firm value after I discount these numbers back to present value. By the way, I'm using a 7.5% discount rate or required rate of return, which I think is fair given their balance sheet and their industry. So if that is true, the company should be worth about $148 billion or $120.12 per share. This would make it a good deal right now given what it's trading at today, about $105. All right, guys, if we get a little more pessimistic with Sony, let's just say their revenue growth is not 4 or 5%. Let's say it's 2% every year, just forever, and their margins stay the same. If we make that assumption, the fair value becomes $107.77, which is a lot closer to what it's trading for now, but it would still be a good deal. Another assumption we could modify is the margins here, 10.2%. That's kind of conservative. Their margins have been going up every year. So rather than use the five-year average, it may be more appropriate to go with 12.6%. And in fact, it may be appropriate to just assume that the margins will continue to grow over time by just a little bit. So let's have them increase by... I don't know, let's say half a percent per year, or just 0.1 percent per year. Yeah, maybe a little more. We'll say um, we'll say just increase just a little bit there. Let's do that going going all the way 10 years. So the, so the margins just kind of creep up to where they're at 13.4 percent after 10 years. If that is true, let's see what the fair value is. So in that scenario, the fair value would actually be $153.44 per share. Again, not really unreasonable. We're not assuming crazy revenue growth or anything like that. Just steadily increasing margins. Okay guys, so here are my final thoughts on Sony stock. First of all, I think the balance sheet is pretty good. I think the business is pretty good, not amazing. It's definitely not a stock I'm dying to own. That being said, it is significantly undervalued. And so for me, I think I'll buy some, but it would definitely depend on what other investments you're holding. You know, you don't want to be too heavily concentrated in a certain industry. You might also have other, you know, better investments, better places to put your money. I could definitely see not buying it. Uh, for me, I'm going to buy it. I'm Anyhow, guys, as always, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching.